Recently, I got to visit Redwood National and State Parks. Redwood National and State Parks is a collection of protected areas on both the state and federal levels in coastal Northern California, an area that is greatly affected by climate change. The parks protect 130,000 acres of forests, rivers, and prairies, as well as 40 miles of Pacific coastline. Temperature rise has a huge impact on the plant and animal communities all over the world, especially in the redwoods. The temperature in the area is already rising, and as climate change progresses, the rate of warming could increase well beyond what it is now. As temperatures rise, plants and animals' as habitats will not be suitable anymore, so many will not survive and whole species could suffer. These high temperatures and long, dry summers are also making fires in the parks more frequent, larger, and more ferocious, as well as lengthening the annual fire season. While fires can be good because they burn the undergrowth and clear up forests, if they become too frequent, many plants never have a chance to regrow. With these massive fire seasons and over a hundred years of fire mismanagement, these forests are really struggling. We need to give them all the help we can possibly give, yet we are still going in the wrong direction. This heat will also cause a loss of water. In the redwoods, among most other places, rain is becoming less and less common. This is terrible because water is vital for the many ecosystems of the park. The snow-fed streams and rivers already have less water, warmer temperatures, and lower water quality and this trend will only continue. Warmer temperatures will also result in less coastal fog, which is not only a vital water source, but a temperature regulator, as the fog helps keep the area cool. Extreme weather will also become a lot more common in the park, and the freak downpours and floods will ravage the remaining plant communities. The average precipitation in the area may not change significantly, but extreme rainstorms that would historically break records will occur much more often. Huge floods will damage the forests beyond repair and drown out any remaining wildlife. The ocean ecosystems of the park are also struggling, as warmer oceans and rising sea levels are having some huge consequences. Increased beach erosion caused by higher tides has already damaged some tide pools and bird rookeries in the area, as well as some archaeological sites that are sacred to the indigenous peoples of the region. These higher sea levels and larger waves will continue to damage this pristine coastline. Many animals in the area are at risk of declining into extirpation as climate change progresses. Fish die-offs will increase due to warmer rivers, and local bird populations will change with projected climate change scenarios. With the loss of all these animals, from mammals to insects to fish, whole ecosystems will be destroyed, and the remaining plants and animals will have to leave or die. There are many more problems facing this park, from air pollution to invasive species to littering, and we have to do what we can to stop them. While Redwood National and State Parks is one place that is greatly affected by climate change, everywhere will feel its effects. We have to take action while we still can, and we must solve this crisis. Coastal redwoods have endured for 200 million years. As continents have drifted, the climate has swung, and as early humans have found their way on this amazing planet. The tallest coast redwood, which is the tallest tree in the world, reaches over 379 feet, taller than a football field is long. These trees are also vital in the fight against climate change, as they suck massive amounts of carbon from the atmosphere. These trees are so amazing and so important, and they have been through so much. We don't want to be the ones to end them.